have the pleasure of speaking with Steve Saviak from Vallejo Pharma. How are you today, Steve? Good afternoon, Tracy. Nice to be back on your show. You know, just before we started this interview, I said there's so many slam dunks on this news release. I don't really know where to start. So investor intel audience, Q1 22 revenues of 4.2 million, up 128%. Q1 22 gross margins of 1.4 million, up 266%. So how about we start there? Well, it's been, as you know, our company has launched three very innovative products last year, and they're starting to contribute uh, to a greater extent into our revenues. So, uh, yeah, no comparison to where we were last year in terms of uh, our company, in terms of people, our revenue, uh, our margins, our loss is now going down Q over Q, which we expect to be break even by the end of the year. Um, So I look forward to uh, quarter over quarter revenue growth, quarter over quarter margin growth. Uh, That's what we foresee for many quarters to come. So let's start with the uh, business highlights that you put out. You want to start talking about the $25 million convertible debenture financing? Yeah, we yes, we completed that financing in uh, December. Uh, It was a convertible debt financing. It is uh, was led by about eight institutions that contributed 19 of the 25 million. So we're now starting to get that institutional following that uh, I get, uh, that we've been working on. Uh, and this uh, the funding uh, was used pre- predominantly for the launches of our uh, two innovative asthma therapies uh, and to support the, the upfront investment that we have to make in those therapies. Uh, we expect both of those products to generate well over 100 million of revenue within about four years time. Um, but of course, as your viewers know, uh, you, you have to invest uh, and that investment comes up front. So the 25 puts us in a very strong financial position going forward. And of course, you talked about the reimbursement by Quebec uh, and the Nova Scotia Minister of Health since December 2021 on Ectectura and Enerzer. Would you like to comment further on that? We currently have a provincial reimbursement. Uh, by all the provinces, uh, except for BC and, and Newfoundland, we expect both of those provinces to come on board within the next two months. Uh, so we'll have pan-Canadian public coverage. We already have pan-Canadian private coverage. And what's important is that for a patient that is prescribed at Tectera or Anders Air, that they have one of these two pockets, whether it be private insurers or the, pro- or the provincial governments, to actually pay for the drug on their behalf. And of course, if you've been following Investor Intel, you've basically been giving us the formula on how you were going to get there for the last couple of years. And you are achieving those goals, Steve. So congratulations, including Redesca. You said you thought it would probably become your number one bestseller, and indeed it has. That's correct. Uh, We launched that uh, basically about a year ago. Uh, It's it's currently and will be for the next uh, 12 to 18 months, probably our best-selling product. Uh, but it will be surpassed after that by the two asthma therapies. But yes, Redesca doing very well. Um, and we're, uh, we were just looking at some statistics where in terms of biosimilars, we actually have about two thirds of that market. So lead, the leading product in that uh, category. Let's not leave out Hesperico because I utilize that daily. And it's now available in 300 stores under the Loblaws banner. Any further comments on Hesperico? I'd, uh, well, Hesperco, as you know, had some very interesting results in a uh, COVID-19 trial that was performed in Montreal by the Montreal Heart Institute, where they published that it may help reduce the symptoms. Uh, I take it also. I believe in it. Uh, we are in Loblaws. We should be able, uh, we should be expanding that coverage in Canada uh, in, the, in the coming weeks. And as you know, it, uh, in, at least on the East Coast here, we start, we're starting to talk about another wave of, of COVID. And uh, the, the interesting aspect about Asperco is it's very good immune support, uh, immune system support. And, and so anything, whether it's a virus, whether it's um, just uh, overall lethargy or what have you, the product is a naturally occurring product, very inexpensive. Um, and I do, uh, I recommend uh, that people take it for, for those very reasons, much more so than vitamin C. Vitamin C is nothing wrong with drinking orange juice and taking vitamin C. But the amount of asperidine in Asperico far exceeds what you could otherwise take. Uh, and asperidine has been shown to have many, many properties uh, that help uh, in maintaining health. 
Now, you've commented on your quote in this news release about the benefits of reimbursement. And may, uh, we have a lot of Americans in our audience. They may not understand what you mean by this. Can you talk to us about that? Well, the, in the, as you may know, the Canadian uh, healthcare system is a sh- social healthcare system. So essentially, there's very few people that pay for drugs out of their pocket. Um, so what's important for a medication to be successful not successful therapeutically, but successful therapeutically and having people have access to the drug is that you have the provincial uh, various medical agencies uh, paying for the drug on their behalf. So uh, again, private insurance is important, but only about 50% of drug prescribers are privately insured. Then you look for those that are not insured. Those are paid for by the governments. It's a key element in the commercial success of pretty well every drug in Canada. And we're very fortunate to be able to get reimbursement across Canada uh, at a, in a very short period of time. It took us about seven months. And you know that, that sometimes could take well over two years to get the provinces to agree to pay for a drug. And I think that says a lot about our people and it says a lot about the value that uh, both Enerzair and Atecturia bring to patients. And of course, we need to let you get back to all those happy shareholders calling you, but first, Let's remind everybody that you are listing on the TSX. So any further comments on that? And congratulations. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, We started trading on the TSX uh, yesterday. Uh, For us, it's a step up. And obviously, uh, we we had a very strong uh, support from the CSE where we originally started trading. But the TSX is the most senior exchange in Canada. And what that does is it broadens our investor base, not just within Canada, but really globally. When we talk to American investors, typically they look at NASDAQ companies. Well, we're not a NASDAQ listed company, but their second choice is, well, if you were on the TSX, which is the senior board in Canada. So being on the TSX opens up a lot of opportunities to approach investors in Canada, institutions and what have you, as well as worldwide. Well, on behalf of Investor Intel, I'd just like to congratulate you. Outstanding results. Thank you, Steve. And we look forward to an update uh, shortly. Thanks a lot, Tracy, and I look forward to being back.